Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. In this video, let me show you how to make a bar chart, histogram, and line graph in the examination. Bar charts have separate columns that do not touch. There are gaps in between. They are used to show data on discontinuous variables. For example, the AB or blood groups, eye colors, and tongue rolling ability. The variation shows widely different alternative states. These groups can be separated into distinct categories, and there are no intermediates between them. For example, this table shows you the rate of respiration of these when given different substrates. Bar charts should be used since the independent variable is qualitative. There is no continuous skill for the independent variable. The dependent variable is continuous as it is the rate of respiration and would be measured as the rate of carbon dioxide production. There are some important rules that you need to remember when drawing bar charts in the examination. Firstly, you should use most of the grid provided. Do not make the chart too small. As a rough guideline, always make sure it is larger than half of the grid provided. Secondly, always draw the chart using a pencil but not a pen. Bar charts should be made of blocks of equal width. There must be space between the bars and the intervals between the blocks on the x-axis should be equidistant. The y-axis should be properly scaled with equidistant intervals as well. The scale should usually start at zero and these should be written at the base of the axis. In case where all the numbers are large, a displace origin can be used. The start number should be clear at the base of the y-axis. The y-axis should be labelled with the headings and units taken from the table of results. Do not shorten the variables. The blocks should be arranged in the same order as in the table of the results. Do not arrange them otherwise. Each block should be identified. A key can be used, but do not shade the blocks. A histogram is drawn for continuous data that is subdivided into classes. For example, body weight of a species of animal in a population. Sometimes, the intervals can be whole numbers. For example, the numbers of seeds in a type of fruit. When you want to draw a histogram, the raw data needs to be organized into classes. The number of classes that needs to be established largely depends on the type and the nature of the data. The general rule for determining the number of classes is 5 times log 10 total number of readings. For example, if you have 50 readings, you will get 8.5. So, 8 to 9 classes are appropriate. However, this is not a fixed rule, and you usually don't have to do this in the examination, as the number of classes is already fixed for you. The range within each class needs to be determined. This is usually the total range divided by the number of classes, minus 1. Again, this is just a general rule. You can always adjust it according to the data you have. Next, in biology exams, we do not overlap the classes. For example, if your first class is 0 to 1.9, the next one should be 2.0 to 3.9. You should not include 1.9 again. The rules when drawing a histogram is very similar to that of a bar chart. This including, use most of the grid provided so the histogram is not too small. Secondly, use a pencil to draw them, not a pen. The x-axis represents the independent variable and is continuous. It should be labeled clearly with an appropriate scale. Unlike a bar chart, the blocks should be drawn touching. Even though the area of each block is usually proportional to the size of the class, but we usually make similar size classes, so the width of the blocks are always the same. The blocks should be labelled clearly. For example, 3.0 to 3.9, which means that 3 is included in this class, but 4.0 is not. The y-axis represents the number of frequency and should be properly scaled with equidistance intervals as well. Line graphs are useful to show relationships in data which are not immediately apparent from the tables. Here are some of the guidelines you should use 
when you draw a line graph. First, use at least half of the grid provided. Do not make the graph too small. Always use a pencil to draw them. The independent variable should always be plotted on the x-axis, while the dependent variable should be the y-axis. If the scale starts from zero, the origin should be indicated with a zero. However, the data should be examined critically to establish whether it is necessary to start the scales at zero. If not, you can always use a displaced origin for one or both axes, but this must be made obvious by labeling the displaced origin very clearly. Each axis should be scaled using multiples of 1, 2, 5, or 10 for each 20 mm square on the grid. This makes it easy for you to plot and extract data later on. Never use multiples of 3. Each axis should be labeled clearly with a quantity and SI units or derived units as appropriate. The axis labels and unit must be the same as those in the table. Your plotted points must be clearly marked and easily distinguishable from the grid lines on the graph. The best options are dots in circle, small crosses, or if you need to plot three lines, vertical crosses can also be used. Note that dots on their own should not be used. When you have more than one line, label each line carefully or use a key. Bear in mind that you have to use a pencil for both lines. Do not use blue or black paint or different colors. Sometimes, after plotting the points, you might suspect that there is anomalous data. To decide whether the data fit the trend, you should use the theory behind the investigation to decide. For example, you know that as substrate concentration increases, the rate of an enzymatic reaction increases. A point that shows a downward trend must be anomalous. If you think one or more of the results are anomalous, then it is a good idea to ring them, put a circle on the graph, and put a key to state that the circuit points represent anomalous results. Another commonly asked question is, should you make a best fit line or curve? In the practical examination, you may only have five or six results. These are likely to be single results rather than means or replicating results. Therefore, you cannot be sure of the relationship and you should not draw a straight line or a curve. So, you should draw straight lines between the points. This indicates uncertainty about the results for values. Only draw a straight line if it is obvious that the points lie on a straight line. Make sure that there is an even number of points on either side of the line. Only join the line to the origin if you have the result on the origin. Or else, always start the line at the first plotted point. Do not continue the line past the last plotted points. You should only draw a smooth curve if you know that the intermediate values fall on the curve. Only when you are expecting the relationship to be smooth curve and if the points seem to fit on a curve, then you should draw one. However, this is usually not a common case in the examination. Again, unless you have a point at the origin, always start at the first plotted point. The curve should go through as many points as possible, but try to make sure that there is an even number of points on either side of the line. Do not continue past the last plotted point. One last thing, do you have to write a title? In the exam, Graphs should normally have informative titles. There's no need to give titles in your plot, unless you are told to do so. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Do share it with your friends as well. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me at the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.